What is up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, low level logic floor. One of the reasons this is described as low level logic is it actually makes use of what we can refer to as an integer overflow. To solve the lab, we are looking to purchase the lightweight elite leather jacket. Without further ado, let's fire up the lab. First thing we're going to do here is log into our account. We're given the credentials for a regular user, username Wiener, password Peter. Let's log in. Let's head to the home tab. Let's check out the elite leather jacket and we're going to add it to our cart. And in the background, we are proxying the web traffic. Now we're going to be making use of Zap proxy for this simply because if we don't have the professional edition of Burp, we need to make use of some very fast requests from the intruder tab. And unless we have the professional edition, it's going to be throttled. This lab can take a long period of time. Leaves us with a couple of options. We can either write our own custom HTTP requests, perhaps using a scripting language such as Python, or we can simply make use of OWASP Zap, which is not going to throttle our attacks by default. Now we can see the post request to the cart here. And if we right click, we can choose the option to open resend with request editor. So taking a look at the post request to the forward slash cart endpoint, you can see the body product ID equals one that refers to the leather jacket and we have quantity equals one. Now it's possible for us to manipulate this parameter very similar to what we do with burp suite. There is an upper limit on the quantity parameter here. We can't use triple digits the maximum we can use is 99. Now, if we send that to the back end, if we then refresh our lab and take a look at the cart, we actually have 100 leather jackets in the cart. We have the initial leather jacket we added manually. We have the post request for an additional 99 leather jackets, and we can see the total of the basket. Now, to cut straight to the issue, it turns out that this integer reflecting the value of the cart is what's known as a 32-bit signed integer, which has a maximum value. Now, quick chat GPT here, we can ask what is the maximum value of a 32 bit signed integer? Signed simply means that it can be positive or negative. An unsigned integer always has to be positive. The maximum value of a 32 bit signed integer is two to the power of 31 minus one, which is 2,147,483,647. Now the problem occurs if we try and add one to this particular integer, there's no longer space within 32 bits when we're dealing with a signed integer to store this number plus one, we run into difficulty. Now the next question we asked ChatGPT here is, write out the binary representation of this integer and why adding one causes an integer overflow. So we can see representation of 32 bits there. The leading bit is actually a zero. This is used to indicate that it's a positive number. Remember this is a signed integer. The initial bit indicates whether it's a positive or a negative sign, i.e. the integer is positive or negative. Now we can see aside from that initial bit, all of the other bits are set to one, which means this is already at its maximum number. So what happens when we try and add one, everything ticks over to that initial bit. We can see that represented here in the code output. All bits turn to one, we add one, we then get all of the bits turned to zero with the initial bit now set to one. Remember zero represented a positive integer, so one is going to represent a negative integer. And we can go to plus 2.147 billion with a signed integer. It means that the lowest value for a signed 32-bit integer is minus 2.147 billion. In other words, when we add one, that is the result that we get, minus 2.147 billion. In other words, keep adding values to the cart. Eventually, we're going to cycle around to the negative numbers again, which basically means we have control over the value of the cart here. Now we can do a little bit of math to figure out exactly how many requests we need to send, although it is given to us in the lab guidelines here. So it tells us to choose exactly 323 payloads. And remember that's where each payload adds 99 of the elite leather jacket to the cart. So let's remove the existing cart or we'll set everything back to zero. In Burp Suite, we would forward this to the intruder tab in OWASP Zap. We can right click and choose the option to fuzz. The fuzzer is very similar to Burp Intruder. It's where we can configure payloads. 
So let's remove any existing payload. We're going to click on the request body where we want the payload to be inserted, but we're actually going to be making use of null payloads in this case, because we simply want to send the same request over and over again. So let's add a new request. Type is going to be empty slash null, number of repetitions 323. Now it is important to throttle these somewhat just because if we send everything at once with concurrent requests, presumably some of them might get dropped. We may not end up with precisely 323. So in the top left, we have an options tab, concurrent scanning threads per scan. Let's just set this to one. We want everything to be sent one after the other. And let's just increment a small delay. These will still send fairly quickly. This is just to make sure everything's clean and we get exactly 323 requests. Let's choose start fuzzer. So Zap can go much faster than this, but we've deliberately introduced a 40 millisecond delay between requests. Now everything has gone through, but when we refresh the cart, we can see that we are at minus 196,000 still. So it's possible that not all of the requests went through. The idea is to keep adding items to the cart until we get a balance which is between zero and 100. So we do want a positive balance we have a $100 store credit on the account. Now with almost $200,000 still to go and a jacket that costs $1,337, I'm fairly sure we're good to submit another request to the cart for 99 other jackets. Let's send this. As you can see, we now have a balance of minus 64,000. Let's just divide that by the cost of a leather jacket. 64,060 divided by 1337. So we can add 47.91 leather jackets to the cart. All right, let's change the quantity to 47. Let's send that. So now we can see the cart balance is minus 1221. So in the ballpark, we can't add another leather jacket. We would actually slightly overshoot that zero to a hundred dollars target. In fact, the safest thing is to just leave that specific quantity of lightweight leather jackets in the cart. We can add other items and those other items can also just be removed from the cart without touching the leather jacket. So let's do some shopping. Let's head to home. We want something that costs a decent amount so it doesn't take too long to manually add everything to the basket. The lemons could be handy. Probably add around about 10 of these to the basket. In fact, at least 11 will be fine. Let's add that to the cart. We'll capture the request with zap. Actually, easiest thing to do is probably just increase this quantity by one each time. Notice that value on the cart is just increasing or decreasing depending on your perspective. So we've added 14 conversation controlling lemons to the cart and you can see we have a total cart balance of 7570 but we have $100 in store credit. So let's choose place order and we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lab. Your order is on its way. So the key idea here in terms of testing is to maybe subject the application to numbers which are an order of magnitude larger than the application would potentially expect because there are actually limitations in memory in terms of how much space is allocated for a specific number. In this case, we saw that memory had space for a 32-bit signed integer, but that caps out somewhere around 2.14 billion. Now, this is not the same as a buffer overflow because that particular integer, we don't exceed its memory bounds. But what ends up happening is when it reaches its maximum value and then ticks over, it then becomes a negative integer, even though all we've done is add value to that integer. But we've managed to impact that initial bit, which is what controls whether the integer is positive or negative. Now, the mitigation here is really validation of business logic. So the app should be checking whether these numbers appear within logical and safe bounds before using them as part of a cart checkout process. There are also various libraries that can be used depending on the program language that's running on the back end that protect against integer overflows, often referred to as a safe math library. We might even place a limitation on how many of a specific item can be included in the cart. There's really no situation where a shop that's selling merchandise should have a checkout or basket value worth over 2.14 billion. In a way, that's illogical from a business perspective as well, because realistically, you don't even have that amount of inventory. If there's some kind of inventory check being run, we wouldn't even be able to add this amount of items to the basket to begin with. So we can have a reasonable limit in terms of how many items can be added to the basket total. Therefore, we're not even going to be getting into the territory where we have a possible 
integer overflow on a 32-bit signed integer. By the way, if you were wondering whether it's possible simply to change the integer from a signed integer to an unsigned integer, this is not actually a mitigation against this vulnerability because unsigned integers are also vulnerable to integer overflow. The only difference is that once we reach the maximum value, we loop round again to zero, whereas with the signed integer, we loop around to an intensely negative number, the lowest number that that signed integer supports. All right, that's pretty much it for this lab. Hopefully you can see why it's referred to as a low level logic floor. Thanks for checking out the content and I'll catch you guys in the next lab.